It's one of the most remote islands in the world. Hundreds of miles away from any other landmass, isolated in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Ascension Island might be 4,000 miles away from the UK, but here the Union flag is flying. This is British Overseas Territory, home to 800 people and a military base, providing Britain's air bridge to the South Atlantic. The island has been under British governance for 200 years after the Royal Navy claimed the land for King George, transforming this volcanic outcrop into a permanent settlement. From this vantage point over Georgetown, all you can see are the roaring waves of the Atlantic. This island is 1,000 miles away from Africa. It's part of the most remotely populated archipelago in the world, and yet it flies the flag for Britain. This is British sovereign territory, an important military hub, a central link to the South Atlantic. It has a long history of service ever since its discovery hundreds of years ago. Covering just 34 square miles, Ascension Island is made up of more than 40 extinct volcanoes. Its red, desolate earth looks like a scene from Mars, so it's not surprising that when the Portuguese first discovered it on Ascension Day in 1501, they didn't see the value in staying. But 300 years later, Britain saw it as a strategic location. Napoleon had been exiled and imprisoned on St Helena, 800 miles south, and the military wanted to make sure they could prevent any attempts on his release. On the 22nd of October, 1815, the Royal Navy garrisoned the island, raising the flag and naming it HMS Ascension, the Navy's only stone frigate. To mark that moment, 200 years on, the flag was raised again in tribute. It's a moment to reflect about what this island has achieved in those 200 years from our military uh, beginnings, uh, the search for water, the search for food, uh, but then when we became a communications centre, uh, uh, again a, a military base in the Second World War, uh, and um, you know, more recently uh, we've formed a government, introduced democracy, uh, and it, today's an opportunity for all elements of the island, the, the military and the uh, St Helena community, to get together uh, to enjoy it and celebrate. The bicentenary of Ascension Island in 2015 brought visitors from far and wide to share in its unique history. Royal Navy Commander Commodore Darren Bone led proceedings, opening a new park in Georgetown and unveiling a new piece of artwork to mark the anniversary. May I declare the park open? It's a huge privilege, of course, to be invited here as uh, the guest of honour of the Ascension Island government. My predecessor at the time, of course, was uh, Admiral Sir George Coburn. He was charged with uh, taking Napoleon and securing him on St Helena, some 700 miles to the southeast, still in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and it's fate, perhaps, that brings uh, another naval officer in command of the South Atlantic at this time. 200 years ago, Ascension would have been a very different place. The red volcanic earth covering the whole island. This bicentenary is a chance to pay tribute to those who served here and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice in making this island what it is today, making life here possible. The first garrison was set up by the Royal Marines. In 1836, Charles Darwin visited on the Beagle, followed later by botanist Joseph Hooker, who recommended planting trees inland to improve the water supply. At the Ascension Island Museum, these early beginnings are well documented, showing the moment underwater communications gave links to the wider world, right through to the Second World War, when the island was used to supply anti-submarine patrols. The United States built an airbase during that time called Wide Awake after the sooty terns that nested nearby. But even after the war, the island didn't stay quiet for long. In the 60s, Ascension Island joined the space race. The runway was widened as a landing strip and NASA established a tracking station on site. 
The island was set up as a communications hub and relay station for the BBC World Service. And during the 1980s, it became operational again, used by the RAF to launch its Vulcan bombers in the Falklands campaign. So you have to take your hat off to the guys that were here initially, all the uh, Marines, because they basically had to make the island, build the island from nothing. Um, as you've seen yourself, it's very barren uh, in areas, and at that time it was completely barren. As you walk around the museum, uh, you start off basically with the natural history, how the island itself was formed, how the volcano itself uh, was formed. And we work around then to the earliest inhabitants, working all the way through to the relatively modern, uh, coming through to sort of like the 1970s uh, and beyond. Today its role is a logistical one, as the air bridge to the South Atlantic. And it's a role that looks set to continue for many years to come. I think Ascension has an important future in strategic terms. We're committed to the long term to the Falkland Islands, for example, and clearly Ascension has a very important role in that. In terms of it being a long way away, that's true, but actually when we switched on the radio this morning, Radio 4 came out loud and clear. It's very much part of uh, the world community. Most passengers just pass through Ascension. The air tanker jets operate a regular service through here from RAF Bryce Norton, using the island to refuel and for a change of crew to turn the plane around for the next leg of its long journey. It's a long flight from Bryce to Ascension Island during the night, but it's good fun when we get down here, sun's shining normally. You get from uh, VIPs, all ranks of military, we got children, their families, so yeah, and also tourists, so we got a mixed bag, so it's good. Visitors wishing to stay on Ascension need special permission from the island's government. Most never get to stay long, but for 20 personnel, this is actually home, and it's their task to keep the RAF operations running all year round. We get the rations in every week. Sometimes we get problems coming in with their issues going down to the Falklands, things we have to deal with. But it's important, so we deal with whatever we have to. I'm as home as much as anyone was, but there's always things to do. And uh, being such a small debt, someone's always around that you know. The team here is small and far away from home. There are many challenges, delays and difficulties living here. And as a result, they all have to muck in and take on more than just one role to keep things running. Sorting through the post, and the passengers that transit through. I don't feel isolated at all, no. I think it's just such a good community, so everyone's together. So it's just like a family, really. At Bryce, you just kind of be on one section and that'd be just your job, but here you've got to muck into everything, so it's much better, because then you just get experience everywhere. You're just more confident as you trade. Everyone has to get used to a different pace of life here, and for those in charge, it isn't always straightforward. So logistics is clearly a challenge. Just your vegetables and your, your mail, which of course are those small things that make you, uh, uh, make you smile. Um, challenges, there are too many, but from certainly the political level, you become a very, very quick learner, let's put it that way. You are a long way from where things are produced. We don't really produce food on the island. We do produce our own water. Um, so, you know, just the basics of life can be, can be challenging here. You know, most people now are used to ordering something on the internet, getting it the next day. We have to wait three months. Uh, and that, that patience is, uh, is something that uh, uh, not, ev not everyone can, can deal with. Uh, but you make up for it with you know, sort of old fashioned pursuits. People read books, play card games, talk to each other. Um, you know, there are still no mobile phones. We're about to introduce them. Uh, so you know, people still talk to each other, which is lovely. Most personnel based in Ascension live here at Travellers Hill. When it comes to downtime, there's little by way of bars or restaurants on island. Instead, most people head outdoors, hitting the beach or heading up into the mountains for a totally different landscape. The cloud forest that was once part of an experiment by Darwin and Hooker is now fully grown and maintained by a warden that welcomes visitors for a look around. Trees that they actually planted all those years ago are still higher on the mountain today um, doing what they wanted to do and bringing, uh, trapping the mist and uh, bringing the rain down. 
residents of Ascension are keen conservationists, having witnessed the impact of settlement on the environment firsthand over generations. They are currently working to nurture native species like the fern and protect the crabs, turtles and birds that flock here in abundance. Community life is very strong. In Two Boats Village, no one locks their doors or cars and the only unwelcome visitors are the wild donkeys and sheep that stray into the garden. The majority of residents are called saints, having arrived here from St Helena and never left. I arrived at Ascension here in February 1963. My ambition was to, to come here to work and make a better life for myself. It was such an interesting island, I, I just fell in love with it. And then I, later years I got married and my wife came here and my son was born here. And we made, we made a home here. I love it here. It's peaceful, it's quiet, the people are friendly. And it's just so different from the UK where you're just busy all the time. At St Mary's Church, the history of the island and the names of its first settlers line the walls. The pioneers who first came here praised and marked with memorial plaques, commemorating those who died during duty, those who sacrificed their lives for the island. Marking the island's 200-year anniversary, the Royal Marines Band were invited back in honour of the first Marines to set up camp here. Their music filling the main square once more as they beat the retreat for the crowds. Obviously, with it being the, the bicentenary and the Royal Marines have had uh, such a, a major part in the history of the island, um, I think it's, it's only right that there's a Royal Marine Band here to help celebrate that. As Ascension looks to the future, changes are in store, bringing the island its first mobile phone network, cinema and direct flight to St Helena. Services taken for granted elsewhere, offered here at last. Ascension might be a long way from home, but it's unique and proud of its past and British sovereignty, of what it's achieved against the odds, of how this rocky volcanic island was tamed and transformed into the military hub and home we see today. Mm -hmm.